Despite the drastic morphological differences seen in these animals, they all possess something very important in common, the ability to bite or inject venom. So how did so many different animals, of all shapes and sizes, come to be reliant on this complex chemical cocktail? How does it work, and what makes it so important? To answer these questions, we must look into the past to see the origins of venom. And what better way to start than to speak to NUI Galway's very own venom expert, Dr. Michel Dugon. So this is actually a bit of a tricky question, because obviously the venom glands do not preserve very well or not at all in the fossil records. So the only indication we have, it's actually structures that are associated with the use of venom. So for example, uh, spine or fangs to actually inject venom into another organism. Most likely, the earliest organism to actually um, to have evolved venom are nidarians, or this would be for the first multicellular organisms. Now, a possibility is that some protist anterior to that so unicellular organisms, already evolved some sort of structure to be able to inject venom so into other um, microorganisms. These are organisms that do not have skeletons. And if they don't have skeletons, they do not preserve particularly well in the fossil records. So the traces that we have are very, very poor, and the preservation uh, is, is usually very bad as well. So what we have is just prints of some organisms, and uh, it's very, very difficult to actually uh, come to, to exact conclusions uh, based on that. Venom is a complex cocktail of proteins which are used by organisms for both defense and predation. In most animals, these proteins originally served a more typical biological function, such as digestive enzymes. A common mutation causes DNA to duplicate itself. This duplication can then mutate without harming the original cell. This mutation could be as simple as creating a signal for this enzyme to form in the mouth instead of the stomach. When this animal then bites its prey, the enzyme may come into contact with the bloodstream of the prey. If this causes a harmful effect, it will make it easier for this animal to hunt, and so the mutation will become more prolific within the species. Over time, this protovenom will further mutate to become more and more toxic. There are a number of different mechanisms for the formation of venom. This is why we see such a wide range of unrelated species making use of venom today. To understand the use of venom in modern animals, we should begin by looking at where it first began. The earliest recorded use of venom that we have evidence for is during the Ediacaran period 635 million years ago. Very recent science points towards the earliest use of venom being predatory sponges. In order for these extremely simple organisms to be successful predators, it is theorised that they would have had to make use of special venom cells or some other chemical means to aid with digestion. These specialised cells are thought to be early precursors to Nidae, which eventually came to be used by Cnidarians. From molecular clock data, we believe that Cnidarians also evolved during this period. However, due to the soft-bodied nature of Cnidaria, we have no physical fossil evidence of what ancient examples would have looked like or how they would have lived. Because of this poor preservation, we cannot say for sure that ancient Nidaria actually used venom, however based on what we know of modern Nidaria, it is a fair assumption to say they did. The use of venom in this period is somewhat at odds with the idea of the Garden of Ediacara, where everything peacefully coexisted. Why would all of these creatures make use of venom in a world with neither predators nor prey? 485 million years ago, the Ordovician period began. During this period, we have evidence of jawless, eel-like creatures called conodonts. These were soft-bodied and only their mouth parts, or elements, are generally preserved. From these elements, we can see grooves along the teeth, which may imply the use of venom. This is logical enough, as these were not known to be particularly good swimmers, and would likely have needed assistance from venom to catch any prey. However, this is not entirely concrete evidence, as many non-venomous creatures have similar structures on their teeth to aid in biting. 445 million years ago, we now enter the Silurian period. Here we see the first use of venom in a terrestrial environment as arthropods began the colonization of land. This opened up a lot of new ecological niches that were filled by a plethora of new species which may have accelerated the rate of venom evolution. 420 million years ago we entered the Devonian period. Examination of RNA genomes suggests that during this period mollusks, specifically cephalopods and later cone snails, employed the use of venom for predation. The Devonian has been aptly named the Age of Fish. Today, over 1,200 species of fish are venomous. In fact, venom glands have evolved separately over 18 times in fish alone, and are used for mostly a defensive purpose today with the use of venomous spines. 250 million years ago, we enter the Triassic period. 
Here we see fossil evidence for grooved reptilian teeth similar to some extinct venomous snakes. These grooves are hypothesized channels for salivary venom and would mark the earliest known example of venomous reptiles. 145 million years ago we entered the Cretaceous. Dinosaurs ruled the land during this period and one in particular, Cynorthinosaurus, is thought to have employed venom. This is known from analysis of its teeth, which display prominent grooves in the fangs, something almost unique to venomous creatures. Back in the oceans, we see evidence of mosasaurs using venom for predatory purposes. This is known from venomous mandibular glands. Meanwhile, mammals have also evolved venom to defend against predators. Analysis of fossilized spur structures indicates that they were attached to a venomous femoral gland. This appendage can still be seen in monodremes such as platypuses. This is the earliest known example of intraspecific venom use for competition within a species. If you consider that venom is driven anyway by that constant armed race between organisms, so essentially the prey keeps getting more and more resistant to the venom. And then that means that the predator has to evolve a venom that uh, is, is more potent or use another strategy in order to kill those prey. So that race will probably continue and will lead to the diversification of, of some toxins. This being said though, venom has been around in terrestrial organisms for at least 420 million years. So evolution already had time to, to, uh, to try a lot of possibilities. And the diversity of venom that we see now, which is already enormous, um, probably encompasses most of the, the possibilities that are truly useful to actually end the life quickly and efficiently to capture a prey or for an animal to defend itself.